Hello and welcome to The Change Room. I'm delighted to say we have again with us Alan Keane. Alan, another big night for Sligo Rovers last Friday night under the lights down on Waterford and another good three points. Yeah, fantastic three points on, on the road. Um, great, a great start to the season. Albeit the performance wasn't wasn't as good as the week before. There was a bit, bit of sloppiness in the game, but who cares? It's three points at the end of the day and what, what a difference a year, year makes considering the start we had last year, you know? Yeah, 100%. Who would you have picked out maybe as the standout performers from Friday night? Well, the obvious one is but obviously man of the match, uh, Jordan Gibson, you know, getting an assist uh, and, and an absolute wonder goal. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, for me, I thought Gary Buckley um, was, was, was excellent centre half. Um, and I have to give a bit of credit to, to uh, Ed McGinty. Um, you know, he, he, for a young lad to bounce back after the mistake he made the week before, he, he pulled off a great save at 1-0 when they were 1-0 down, a double save that Waterford go ahead and score that. They're 2-0 down. Rovers mightn't have come away with the three points. But uh, yeah, Jordan Gibson, excellent in the game. Um, Romeo's finish, and another supine finish, you know. So um, for me, yeah, definitely Gary Buckley, um, Gibson, and I uh, have to have a word for McGinty for the, for the saves. Yeah, Ed McGinty, in fairness, absolutely brilliant to bounce back. Obviously, it was the mistake the first week. Sligo Rovers seem to have unearthed an absolute gem in in Jordan Gibson Allen. Yeah, and I, I liked his interview afterwards. He was disappointed in his performance. I was like, <laughs> Jesus, are you stopped? So exciting things to come. No, he was just brilliant. He was slow to get into the game, as he said himself. But I think the boys then and you having the likes of Greg Bulger, he was clever. When he seen when he seen uh, Gibson getting loads of, of joy. He was switching the play quickly. And I was I was sitting in the house watching. I was like, keep giving it to him. Keep giving mm -hmm. it to Gibson because he was doing it. And then, you know, you, 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 you look at the wingers. You, you, you're hard to train with wingers like that. He's just, he was, he was, you can see that a guy was full of confidence. He turned back. He took the two lads on. And to, to dig out that cross, and he was, he was, he was falling. A little, lovely little float, float across. And uh, Romeo caught it on the sweet spot. And um, they, like, like you know, they've done excellent to come back because I thought the first goal, the, the goal they conceded was absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was just it's so disappointing when you concede from a, a set play, and you're just going. Oh, hopefully, it's not one of these nights. Um, but Jordan Gibson, yeah, and then the second half, he continued on where he left off and uh, got his he's just awards with that absolute superb goal. Like, <laughs> it's it's hard not to uh, it's hard not to take Romeo with your heart. I mean, for the first. For the first 10 or 15 minutes, I really hope he doesn't mind me saying this, he was absolutely awful, so he was. He I was just, yeah, yeah. It, it was brutal. And then and then this ball comes to the back post and you're probably thinking, oh, not tonight for him. And he just unleashes the strike. I mean, it was just it was just perfect. Yeah, and look, yeah, look I was here as well. I was like, oh, Romeo's just off the pace. And <laughs> I was like, you know, you had a bit of a trampoline on the bottom of his foot. Like, and I was like, oh, here. But 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 I was giving him a bit of a doubt because he was just back and he's not long back. He's fitness yeah. and then, you know to get into the game and then all's forgiven with that with that goal, you know. But that, like watching Romeo the week before against Dundalk, he's, he's so clever when he gets the ball and he's he's awareness and um, I'd hate to play, play against him, put it that way, um, you know. But so he's grown into it and he's like a new signing for us, um, which is great. Johnny Kinney, again. He mightn't have been in the game much, but his movement off the ball is, is brilliant. And so, so some people mightn't see that, uh, you know, throughout the game, but his movement by pulling off, allowing that space for Romeo or someone to go into it. And also a player that's gone really under the radar um, last year's player of the year, Niall Morgan. People, people probably said, Jesus, was he playing? But by God, if you ask many, uh, much of the defenders there or all the defenders, they probably say, we know Niall Morgan is playing because the way he, the, the little tackles, the little locking off that ball into the front man and stuff like that that he does. The un the you know the unseen things that as fans we'd see the Gibson goals, we see Romeo goals and we see the flair from all the uh, you know Johnny Kinney. But the likes of Moore and, and, and Bulger and uh, I think they're a great partnership in there. I'm really glad you brought up at the start there um Gary Buckley. Uh, I, I I'd be the first to say at last season at times I would I would have been critical when he played in the centre centre half, um, and I know from speaking to people around the club, then they said they loved him at centre half. The players loved him at centre half. I think this year it's a lot more noticeable. He's very calm on the ball. He we spoke about Greg Bolger and about other players in the first sure. two games of the season and the influence they're they're having. But 
Gary Buckley seems to kind of breathe this bit of confidence through the team. Some of the switches of play he had the other night were absolutely outrageous. It's like like Rio Ferdinand in his prime at times. But what have you seen? How have you seen his game develop maybe in the last year or so going to centre half? Yeah, it, it's it's interesting because when I played against uh, Gary when he was at Cork and stuff, he was playing in, in the number 10 role, just playing off. So for him, it, it was weird to see him drop back last year into the centre-back spot. But what he brings is, he brings that experience, the calmness, but also he's so he's so good on the ball, as in he's cla- he, like exactly the type of player Liam Buckley would like at centre-back. Give him the ball, he can play out a pass, and he's... And he's not afraid to receive it because he's he's re- receiving it with a player up his back because he's been doing it years in that number 10 role, in the midfield role. But um, I just think he's slotted in. He reads the game so well and he compliments he compliments John Mahan. And I think the two of them, and I've said it from week one, that the two of them have sh- struck up a great partnership. And if you can keep them two fit, I, and I, look in, I looked at a lot of the other games, I, nearly all the other games over the weekend, Rovers... Could be challengers, and that's 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 uh, that's a statement for me to say because because I, I've seen nothing in the other games for Rovers to fear, you yeah. know. Um, and if they can keep them players fit, and do you think about it, Colin Horgan again had a good good game the last night, and I thought Robbie McCourt, so the back four have, have been very good the first two games, and you're talking they're going away to Longford next week, and if they can get a win again against Longford, which will be difficult. But if they can get a win again, what a start to the season and bring that confidence going into the, the Shamrock Rovers game. And I know we spoke about last week, the uh, maybe the game in Tal on the Friday night and then the decision against us, against Dundalk. The refereeing um, uh, the other night down in Waterford was was a million miles above. I thought he, yeah. let, he let the game flow. It was a completely, completely different game. Yeah, Paul McLaughlin and uh, not one yellow card given out. Brilliant. So... Yeah, brilliant. He just let the game flow. You, you wouldn't even know he was in the middle of the park, put it that yeah. way. So the game was just, it, it was a good game. It was an entertaining game. And I, do you know what? Like, I, I've given Waterford a bit of stick. Um, but I, I still think they will struggle. But they, in fairness, they, 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 for their young side, they've done well. Like, you know, I think the average, I think the eldest on the pitch was, um, uh, was the guy that signed from Shelburne. I can't think of his name. Um, oh, I can't think of his name, but he was 25. He was eldest on pitch until Dar- Darren Murphy came on, you know? Yeah, Darren Murphy so, could have been, probably picked up a yellow there at one stage as well, but yeah. the referee did, it, did let it flow, and I think it's important because we, we do enough criticising probably throughout the year. It's nice to recognise a referee that did let the game flow and did let us enjoy the game on the Friday night, so uh, I think yeah. you have to give that a wee shout. Um, that was, you've answered my next question in, in terms of Waterford, I think. If you look at the players they lost from last year, people would have people would have feared from this year. They did put up a good bit of fight. They did work hard. Did you see enough to maybe think that they're guaranteed survival, or do you think that they could be down around the bottom end of the table come the end of the season? Yeah, I I, I think they they'll be down there. I th- I, I think they they possibly get relegated to be honest with you, or they'll be definitely in the in the playoffs. Look at yeah, they did. They put up a good fight. They're they're a young side, as I said, it's a massive step up from nineteens into the first team and you can you can blood you can blood two or three lads a year but you can't you can't expect uh, a lot of kids nearly 11 of them 12 of them whatever 13 whatever they have in the squad uh, with a few older lads so for me yes they played well but them the type of games you'll see them they'll be naive in games where they they, they, they get that sucker punch of a goal they might play well in games but they're coming up against the Shamrock Rovers coming up against the Dundalks I don't. I can't see them getting results, and even I was impressed with kind of um, Longford the last night um, against Bowes. So I just, I just, you know, I fear for them. There's after the weekend action. I think there's there's a couple of important questions that really need to be to be asked, um, and one of them is Alan, where are Finn Harps going to play their Champions League games? <laughs> it was funny. Look at we said here on the first episode. I, Ali Horgan, like. I'm delighted for them because they had never, from the last couple of years, they haven't got the rub of the green at all. The band yeah. has, just had a thing. And he's just, he, he's getting all the luck. And I love this comment. He goes, uh, Champions League football. And, you know, the title is coming to the Northwest somewhere. But it, it's just brilliant. And he, he's fully deserving. Um, they, they were great. They, do you know what? They, they, were, they were brave against Dundalk, I thought. They didn't go up there like the normal Finn Harps and just sit there and let Dundalk have it. I don't think, I don't think teams fear Dundalk now. They're coming too predictable. Predictable. 
you know, they're playing out from the back. Finn Harps pressed them really, really well. I thought the game plan was excellent. Um, albeit there was a mistake by, by the keeper. But that mistake, that doesn't be a mistake if, it's, if that ball is not closed down, if that desire is not there by the Finn Harps player. And he was doing that for the whole game. And he's got his rewards. He might have done it 10 times previous, but he's got his rewards. And, 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 and they, they went ahead. And I thought then Dundalk would have been a, a wounded animal coming out. But Pat Hoban scored early enough. But Finn Harps, in fairness to them, they weren't afraid to mix it. And, and their, their game plan was excellent. And uh, they were hanging on in the end. But it was a great second goal again by Foley. Yeah, um, he's on there, yeah. Great, absolute great finish. And Pat Hoban obviously yeah, hit the post at the end. But... Um, as Ali said afterwards, they didn't deserve to get beat. Um, did they deserve to win the game? I don't know, possibly, but delighted for Ali and, and Finn Harps. I think I heard him say after the game, he's just he's some character. He turned yeah. around and he says that uh, they're going to need more than six points to stay in this division. So if any of the players thought that they were getting ahead of themselves, he's just he's unreal. In terms of the Dock Allen, I know we kind of we spoke we spoke last week about some of the signings they've brought in. Are they going to still be knocking around the top come the end of the season? Or are we watching a slight demise on front of our eyes as this season goes on? Or are these new signings that maybe we don't know enough about that just need a little bit of time to, to settle in? Yeah, well, these new signings, I suppose two of them have played international during the week. The, la- the, the last team guy, Jargowski, he played mm-hmm. against the Netherlands. They're just gone yesterday, yeah. so he played a full 90 minutes. So they haven't been playing as really the keeper, but I just think they're in a, a team in transition. Um, and as I said there they're getting very predictable they're playing it out the, the keeper loves to play football it's all well and good having the keeper love to play football you've got to be able to mix it up when things aren't going well you've got to have you know you might have to get it long for a while just to stretch things sometimes this playing it allows teams to squeeze up a little bit whereas if you stretch them the odd time as a defender you tend to stop drop back a little bit because you're now going oh hang on a minute he might put one in over my head here so but by playing it out the back the whole time it allows you to squeeze up and then the space becomes tighter. And I don't think the likes of Chris Shields has performed uh, well uh, yet. Um, it's a big change for him in there. Patrick McLenny was a big loss the last night. And again, you look at Junior. Junior didn't do much the last day. And they made two changes at half time. So that just shows that they weren't happy with the performance. And um, I definitely think they don't know their best 11 yet. And until they find out, it's a big game for them next week. They're playing away to, I think it's in Tala. Yeah, yeah. Shamrock Rovers. So if they lose that game, Shamrock Rovers go about four points clear of them, yeah. with, or three points clear of them with a game in hand. At this early stage of the season, it's, it's not good. Uh, your old mate, uh, Stevie O'Donnell, uh, in Shakur on was it Friday, Saturday night, 2 1. Good win. Ronan Cochran off the mark for them. Uh, it was important they got that win, Alan, because after getting such a good result in Tala and playing well the week before, if they had gone and maybe dropped points against Drogheda then, it then, they kind of would have taken the shine off that performance from the week before. Yeah, one hundred percent. But I think they needed to back up that performance with a win. They they done all right. They had a lot of possession. Uh, they were a very possession based team, and they don't really hurt you too much in the final third. They're still lacking that something in the final third. Um, but they they they'll definitely be getting stronger. Pats. I was impressed with Drogheda as well. You know, for a team that's just come up, Tim Clancy has been playing mm-hmm. some good football. Do you like them? And yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he has been playing some good football, and they're able to mix it. Like you know, so they have. They have some decent players as well. And look at Billy King. Uh, I, I seen Tim's interview afterwards. He was disappointed. Um, the, the, what, the defender should have just cleared the ball at the, uh, at the end, just put it out. And he's getting nicked in the box and, and, and Billy King has uh, slipped in at the back post. But look at Pat's probably maybe deserved it um, uh, overall in the game. They did have a lot of possession, but um, th- th- as Pat's always did have, and I, I expected under Stephen O'Donnell, he'll mm-hmm. want them playing. But uh, we know yourself, football now has become a thing where it's all possession, possession, stats, yeah. stats, you know, whereas sometimes you just need to mix it up and, and, and get that get that little, you know, <laughs> sometimes the, the horrible side of it. It's, it's a result-based business at the end of the yeah. day. Um, speaking of results, good result for Longford in Daily Mount, but a couple of big points dropped for Bohemians, Alan. Yeah, I haven't been impressed with Bohemians at all. I was I was expecting that, as I said to you, and the and the, the I was getting as bad as Wes at the the. the <laughs> You're not as bad as him. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, I, I I was looking. I was expecting Bohemians to win comfortably, and I thought when they went to tune it up, um, you know, but they looked very ordinary as well. They looked they didn't look to kill the game off, and I have to hand it to to Langford. Mm-hmm. They they they're not great technically. They're not they're not a great side. 
but they were dogged and they never say die attitude and they just kept fighting and fighting and when they got that goal uh, the first goal I was like they're hardly going to nick it here are they and they did in fairness they uh, it was poor defending uh, for both goals really um, but uh, look at Longford I think they deserved it in the end for, for the battling it wasn't pretty by them but who cares they were just after coming up and all they're worried about is these all these points could, could add up at the end of the year for them well, uh, in terms of Longford, we, we go to Longford next Friday night, I think it is, where the early game at quarter to six. Sligo over, so we might run through next week's fixtures. You've done well this week, Alan, in fairness to you. You predicted that, uh, that Hearts will get something off Dundalk, so we have to, we have to pay you credit yeah. on that one. Um, Longford and Sligo over is 5.45 on Friday. Yeah. Alan, how do you see it going? It's going to be, it's going to be a difficult one. Um, two teams are in good form. Um, I still, I still have fancy Sligo Rovers. I just think they have too much quality. But from watching Longford, yeah, look, look at Rovers are going to be in a battle. Um, there's no doubt about it. But I think they have the too much quality and, and they have the confidence at the minute, up at the minute, to, to go and win the game. Um, it will be a tight win, I think, one or two nil. Um, maybe, you know, Longford at home are, are decent. So look at it. Uh, any three points will do. Yeah, no one's going to want to play Longford this year, in fairness to them. No. Um, no. Jams and Dundalk. Yeah, it's it's it, it's a it's a difficult call, but I, I I can see. I know Dundalk will be fired up for this one. They don't want ones to get over. You, you, possibly a, you could see a draw here, but I think yeah. Shams with the break that they've had. Um, I think Shams. It's it's going to be. Uh, I think Shams at home. I think Shams will beat Dundalk. I just I just think Dundalk are lacking a lot of confidence at the minute, but they will be they will be up for this game. But I just think Shams will uh, will nick it. Yeah, it's a fascinating game because, um, again, Dundalk, when, when the chips have been down, I mean, they probably weren't favourites going into the cup final last year. Sometimes they do grind out that result against Shams. Obviously, the confidence will be a little bit dented. Shams will be looking to pick up a couple of points, obviously, after the game being postponed this week. Um, Rohada and Finn Harris, another tough one. There's actually, a, you can't pick one, honest to God. No, it, it, it's, going to be, it's going to be a tough one, that one. And look at Rohada and Finn Harris have had... Had had good battles over the years there with the with the playoffs and uh, it was always tight. Uh, as I said, Tim has the team playing decent football, but does Harps' experience in the league come into it and and, and the confidence that they have? I think Harps might nick it, you know. <laughs> yeah, Ali Horgan, another good another good night for him. it will be definitely a step closer to Champions League football. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all up the Valley Buffet on the Bear next year. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, Derry Waterford. Um, I think Derry, I think Derry will 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 finally get off the mark. Um, it, it like Derry again watching their game against Longford. I wasn't impressed. They were they were all over the shop. But I think Derry, Derry always seemed to have a slow start. But I think they will will again. A Waterford, okay. But I I just I think Derry Derry win it easy. Um, Bowes and Pat. Yeah, this is a difficult one. Um, I think I'm, I'll go for a draw here. I, it's going to be hard to separate them. Pat's very possession based, good, good defending. They're good at the defending. Bows, uh, sloppy at the back. Good. At, I, th- I just think I can see a draw here. Okay. Uh, we'll hold you to them results so next week. Yep. Um, just before you go, Alan, obviously we were all watching what unfolded um, in the Luxembourg, the Luxembourg game. I know you recall the way. For, for work duties um, during, during the game, which you, you did see most of it. You have been in a position, you've been in a dressing room with Stephen Kenny. You've been in a very successful dressing room with Stephen Kenny, I might add. How is he going to face into, not only the Qatar friendly, also to get the break, how is he going to face into the next couple of fixtures and the next period as Ireland manager? Yeah, he's under he's under a lot of pressure. I see the chairman come out today, uh, Roy Barrett, and he's, he said, Look at his they they backed him and they 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 haven't even thought about any any other thing. And Stephen is a great manager. He's a great man manager. I think players have to buy into it. And I I feel like maybe the the older lads that maybe have never played in the league wouldn't know Stephen probably aren't buying into it. But you can see what he's trying to do. Um, he's blooding these young lads. Like you look at the lads that he's ha, has given chances. I don't think they would have got chances under the likes of Mick McCarthy. And like, what do you do? Do you do you, do you sack him and who do you bring in? and go back to square one we've got to hold our hands up as a nation we're, we're not we're not that good we're mm. not a, we're not a good side we've a lot of young lads we're, we're in complete mess from 
the previous ownership have, has left us in a complete mess. And I feel sorry for Stephen Kenny. He's taken over the time that's that's between his injuries, between the pandemic and COVID affecting the players and stuff. And he just hasn't got the lucky break. But I think we just have to be patient, allow these younger lads to, to de- try and develop and um, look at get Stephen Kenny to let him to put his stamp on it. I find it hard because they come back from clubs. They come back on a Sunday evening. The game's on a Wednesday. They're on the training pitch on, on a Monday. There's not a lot of time together. And you're trying to get lads that come from clubs that are playing 3-5-2 and 4-4-2 to come in and play a different system. And as a player, it's not easy when you're used to week in, week out, maybe playing in, in a 4-4-2 where you're just a rigid right back or, or a, just a midfielder of a two to come into a 4-3-3 where you're now, you know, and it's, it's a completely different formation or a 3-5-2. So I just think we need time and patience because sacking him, what are you going to do? Who are you going to get in? Roy Keane, and he's going to just, you know, throw a, a, a bomb into the squad or whatever. Or, you know, you, you, yeah. you don't know. Like, so I just think, give him, let, run out this World Cup campaign, let him blood the kids, and then test them on the, on the European Championships when, it, when they come around. And, and uh, I've no doubt about it. Stephen is, you know, he's a very enthusiastic about his football. He loves his football. He's a great man manager. He's a great manager. Uh, very intelligent, reads the games the way he reads the games. He just needs, and I think from him being under 21 manager, the players will know what he's like. And these are the players that are coming through, like the Troy Parrots, you know, all these boys. They need, they'll know what Stephen Kenny's like, but they're still only kids. Mm-hmm. So wait for another three years, they're 23, 24, and that'll be the, the telling, you know. So um, I, 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 I still think it is frustrating at the minute. Luxembourg, it's embarrassing losing at home to Luxembourg, and there's yeah. no doubt about it. But we have to stick. I, th- I think we have to stick, and we'll see better football. And I hopefully we won't look back. And just before you go, I think I don't think I've ever heard um, Seamus Coleman speak more than I have in the last kind of the week or ten days. And it's kind of like when the chips have been down. In fairness, he's come out uh, and he's backed backed his team. How impressed have you been with with Seamus in the last couple of weeks? I know results haven't gone our way, but he has stood up to some responsibility in fairness. He has. And coming out yesterday evening cannot be easy. Oh. Yeah, Captain, and you know what? His interview was excellent. Absolutely excellent. He, he, the way he, he he's, he, you know, he, he, he nearly touched everyone. Uh, mm-hmm. Harris has said, I'm, I'm feeling for you all, you know, as, as, an, as a nation, like he, he, you're, you're proud to be to him to be leading your team. And he's just, he's, he's an example for everyone. And I think, um, you know, him, Shamey and the lads that are there while would be absolutely devastated. Embarrassing. It'll be embarrassing for them. It'll be embarrassing going back to the clubs, their clubs, knowing they've got beaten by by Luxembourg, their families. And Shamey's there around a while. He'll, he, he'll know how to rally the younger lads. And he, I, I love the way he said he felt sorry for, for Gavin mm-hmm. Bazunu yeah. on, on his debut. So, because Shamey knows what, 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 what it means to him. And, uh, and I thought that was that was really, really nice of him. Well, Kino, thanks very much uh, for joining us. Hopefully, we'll come back again and we've, we'll have been looking at another three points of Sligo Rovers yeah. uh, and another good weekend of action in the SSE or Tristity League. Again, thanks for coming on and joining us and we'll chat to you again soon. Cheers, Mark. Thanks a million. Cheers, Alan. EJmenswear.com Shop Calvin Klein Tommy Hilfiger Farah EJmenswear.com Shop Raz Varen Ted Baker Gaunt EJmenswear.com Shop Lion Scott G-Star Super Dry Shop Top Brands Shop Irish Owned Shop EJmenswear.com